Hello everybody and welcome to my channel once again. New applications are great, right? It is super easy to add new features and life is all roses. But what happens when the applications grow? Typically, it's not that easy to add new features anymore, right? In this video, I will show you how you can add indexes without downtime. Let's see it. So imagine that the product owner comes to you with the idea of a new page in which there will be a list of users and you should be able to filter those users by email. So as a good engineer, you decide that adding an index on the email will be a great thing because you will speed up the searches by email. So you decide to add that. It's not a super complicated thing. You have done that in the past lots of times. So you create the migration, run it, and suddenly you start seeing that things don't go as they used to be when the application was way smaller. You realize that the application first takes longer as it used to be, and then you start getting some reports of some people telling that the application doesn't work, that they aren't able to add, edit, or delete users. So what's going on here? So by the end of the migration, you decide to do a little post-mortem on what happened and then you check Postgres documentation and you realize that Postgres locks the table on writes when you are adding a new index. So how can you fix that with Ruby on Rails? Let's see what can we add to the migration file to fix this problem. So let's see the migration that gave us problems in detail. First of all, I would like to tell you that this only works in Postgres SQL. It doesn't work with MySQL, but if you have Postgres, the solution will work for you. So, as we said, the problem we had was that we were adding an index on email on the users table. And the problem was that by doing this, Postgres typically locks the writes on the users table. So, how can we disable that? How can we um, avoid that from happening? In Rails, we just need to add another option, which will be to specify the algorithm we want to use in order to add the users. And in this case, we want to say that the algorithm is, should be, sorry, concurrently. To add the email, the, sorry, the, the index on email concurrently. Is that everything we need? Sadly, not. But it's not, uh, I mean, we don't need to add much more things. We only need to have one more thing into account. And it's that, by default, Active Record wraps everything, every migration within a transaction. And since Postgres advises us not to do that, if we want to use the concurrently strategy, we need to specifically tell Active Record that we want to disable that. How can we do that? It's very easy. We just need to say that we want to disable DDL transaction here with this directive. And that should be it. If we run this, we should be able to add the index on email concurrently without locking writes on the user's table. And that should be it. But before we end, I want to give you a bonus tip. And it's that if you have other migrations, you should run them in isolation. I mean, you should add this migration, which dis disables the, the default transaction in isolation because the default behavior of after record of wrapping everything within a transaction is great in most of the cases because if something goes wrong and the migration is aborted, everything will be rolled back. But if you imagine if you put here more, more code, more changes, that code would also be a, affected by, by this disabled DDL transaction. So the best thing to do in this case is to have them in other files and let these kind of migrations that need to disable this default behavior in isolation. So that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. And also, if you want, please leave me a comment to tell me the things that you have liked the most or probably things that you want me to talk about in this channel. And with that said, I hope to see you in my next video. Adios!